Mercury 2 Half Frame Camera by Universal Camera Corporation from New York, New York. Why should we care? The Universal Mercury 2 CX camera was sold in the United States from Christmas of 1945 until approximately 1952 as a cheaper alternative to the more expensive German Leica and Contax 35mm cameras of the time. So this camera is post-war but pre-rock and roll. What a time we had tonight! <clears throat> the post-war music scene was pretty silly. <laughs> yeah, he's a pecking it all day long. He pecks a few. I pulled it in and opened it up, and much to my surprise, ooh, I discovered a light before my eyes. Ooh. How much is one worth now? If we were to buy one today in 2017, it would cost about $50 to $150 on eBay. But if we were to walk into a camera store in 1949, how much would we have to lay down? I found two sources. One says about $25 and the other one says about $80. With our handy money time machine, we can see that things seemed much cheaper back then, but when we take inflation into account, that $25 camera would have been like buying a $250 camera. And the $80 price of the Mercury 2 would have made it an $800 investment. That seems like a bit much. For example, the Kodak Pony camera in Christmas time of 1951 would have been like spending about $300. Not bad. But this top of the line Kodak movie camera would have been $1,000 in today's money. So the Mercury camera might have been pricey at $800, but not totally ridiculous if it was a high end camera. According to the Montgomery Ward camera catalog, the Argus C3 camera sold for about $60, or obviously $600 to us, back in 1950. And that camera is, it's okay, it's not that great, it's a little clunky. Maybe the lesson here is that in the past, cutting edge technology was not that great compared to what we have now, but it was still relatively expensive. A 17 inch black and white television in 1950 was 250, 1950 dollars, which would have been two and a half thousand dollars. So what can we discern about this camera? It's modern. Look at the beautiful sleek lines and circular curves. This style is similar to architecture from the 1920s and 1930s, when there were such things as buildings in ocean liner style of architecture. Why is it called the Mercury II? Because it's the second one they made. The first version of this camera was called the CC, which some say stood for Candid Camera. This version was sold from 1938 until about 1942. The Mercury 1 had real leather, not plastic leatherette, different strap lugs, a different rewind knob, and was cast out of pure aluminum to keep it light. It also took an odd proprietary, universal type of film cartridge that was similar to the regular 35mm roll that is still around today, but didn't fit any other make of camera. This was just Universal trying to force people to buy their film. This is similar to what Sony did when it first started making digital cameras. They forced everyone to buy their memory sticks instead of the standard SD and CF cards. After the war, Universal started casting the Mercury II from a magnesium aluminum alloy that didn't keep its shine as nicely as the pure aluminum, and they also changed it to accept the common 35mm film that was becoming the default film for cameras of this size. The Univex Mercury back in the good old days had some very advanced features. A blistering top shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. Maybe that's why it's called a Mercury, because it's fast. This camera was the first to have a built-in flash synchronizer for flash bulb pictures, or as we would call it, a hot shoe. First of all, you can tell that it's a half frame just by looking at the front. Look at the viewfinder, it's vertical, it's not horizontal. And also, here's the dial that counts all of the exposures, it goes up to 60. Now we come to the real party piece of this camera. It has a circular shutter. That's why there's this big stupid hump on the top. It's got a huge circular shutter in it. 
By the way, I found that any old US patent can be looked up online. There's beautiful imagery in there. And this is why we should care about the Universal Mercury 2 camera. It has a 3 inch wide circular shutter to make half frame 35mm exposures. The shutter was very fast for its day. Kind of like the Jaguar XK120, which was the fastest car in the world from 1940 to 1949, and it went 126 miles an hour. Not exactly a big deal, because today you can buy a Volkswagen Golf, it, that can go just as fast. It's made from cast aluminum and magnesium. It is the first camera with a hot shoe. It makes a very pleasing noise. You can get over 60 shots on a roll of 36 exposure film, and it looks pretty cool. One extra thing. There's this song I found called 
I'm going slightly mad by this band you may have heard of called Queen with this guy singing you may have heard of called Freddie Mercury. Ha, huh? Mercury. Mm. Makes noise though. <laughs> 